Hi everyone, it's been a long time since I put a video up here, so I'm overdue in that sense. And uh, there's a concept that we've been talking about uh, around here lately that has been uh, just getting a decent amount of attention as far as uh, feedback is concerned. And I know that my posts, they can be long and lengthy and uh, contain a lot of information. So the just the purpose of this video is to kind of give the core nuts and bolts to uh, what this strategy, if you want to call it that, uh, entails and um, just the concept overall and a couple others that basically lean into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is inner trend lines and um, to do this we're just going to go over the daily low that registered about four or five trading days ago now and uh, it's the end of the day on Friday it's so uh, we're just sort of meandering in price now but um, we had uh, another hit off of an inner trend line and the reason I always go back to these inner trend lines and if you're not familiar with much of the writing um, if you go to my blog there's there's lots now written about this subject but uh, we always go inside of price as opposed to the periphery okay or just the highest highs or the lowest lows as in this case and uh, the reason we do that is mainly just flips back to confluence you usually find the most confluence or the most number of con uh, historical hits on the trend line if you go back in uh, back, uh, excuse me, if you're looking at um, the insider price, uh, the as opposed to the periphery here. So, uh, as far as these are concerned, uh, we always see much cleaner hits get registered off of them when price comes down into them and uses them as fades, as you see over here. Or likewise, if this were to break down and come up and retest this level, you probably get a much cleaner register than if you were to use the the outer trend line here. Okay. It, what happens is this is the, the normal way of drawing these things and this is just sort of the conventional um, wisdom that's taught about them and so what happens is when, when the masses latch onto these things and they see something over a longer scale like this when price does get down here it usually acts as such a convoluted mess and these inner trend lines just generally speaking do not okay and um, you just again just tend to get much cleaner registers off of them so uh, we always always use those and these come into play with pretty much every other concept that we do that involves trend lines like the one that we're about to discuss so I'll, I'll get into that right now uh, I'm gonna go down to a five minute chart first we're gonna talk about just sort of the short term and behind doing this I, I've just had a project wrap up recently so I've had a little more time to get on Twitter and things like that I posted a chart the other day that just we were talking about these lunges or just you know these bucks in the trend going lower here and I pointed out this low and I pointed out this low down here okay and then our daily low is also recognized through this same exact concept okay so all we're doing is we're just drawing a trend line now there are um, three different variants that I posted uh, in terms of how to do this on the last article I taught uh, wrote excuse me and so this um, this concept that we're going to go over today is just just one of the variants. This is probably the most commonly used, most widely accepted form of doing this. Probably just uh, why it registers so cleanly most of the time is just because it's again it's just sort of the the industry standard, if you will, um, for something that's so kind of ambiguous here. But I'll show you how it's done. Is we just grab a standard fib retracement, and all we're doing is we're dragging from our highest high right here and we're going down into the trend line the point right below that peak okay now we're on a smaller scale now uh, just a smaller time frame what happens is when you're using this on a larger time frame and these do stick on larger time frames uh, in fact most of the examples people have been sending me have been on hourly four hour or daily charts showing reversals off these levels but um, what's going to happen is the pitch of your trend line is going to change based on where you put it okay now there are a few different ways you can draw this trend line here and uh, when you're looking at things on a shorter term basis uh, you always just want to go with what's sort of the most common sense way of doing it okay um, now I didn't I know we just said uh, we were talking about inner trend lines we're looking for confluence okay uh, on the shorter time frames is on the smaller time frame excuse me it's not going to matter as much okay on the larger time frames it certainly will and we'll talk about a way to basically approach that right from the beginning so they make sure that you're getting the right one in just a second when we skip up to a 15 minute chart so as far as this chart is concerned though um, anytime we move that trend line we also move our extension so our numbers are going to shift 
okay? Uh, when you're dealing on an intraday basis like this, there, again, that deviation is going to be so small. And also, you know, again, we're not dealing with, um, with, uh, with a massive move in price here, okay? We're only talking about a couple ticks. So there's a couple different ways to use these. The first is for profit taking, okay? So if you're short in this trend, you're seeing this, the back of this trend line get used as resistance and prices traveling lower. You've got two numbers down here to really look at. Uh, the first is 1.618, that's the golden ratio. That is the mother of all Fibonacci numbers, okay? And then the second one is 2.0, or just a 100% extension of this move right here, okay? So um, both of these uh, pretty much always hold some form of integrity, okay? And it, it, with the exception of you've got price just basically going spastic out of control on fundamental data or, or news events or, or just an unexpected news event or something like that. Uh, how, so, but on any typical basis, this is what you come across, okay? Price races, then it starts to chop up, and it's using these levels of support on the way back down, okay? Um, now, on a longer time frame, uh, or excuse me, a larger time frame, keep mixing those up, you're dealing with something a little different here. Uh, so, there's sort of a cheat, not a cheat, but actually just um, the way you should be doing it. Uh, what we're looking for is the first retest we can find, or significant retest in this last trend. Let me just get rid of this for a second. Okay, so when we're moving down lower, we're looking for the first significant pullback, which is going to be right here. Okay, so that's where we're setting up our line. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to recent price action, and we're looking for confluence in terms of hits on this trend line. Okay, so we just want to see hit after hit after hit after hit uh, as much as possible on this line. The more, the better. Um, and we're basically just going to pick the, pick the line that um, has the most confluence, okay, no matter where it is really, uh, as long as it's not coming in at a weird angle, or excuse me, the opposing angle. So we're just basically working our way up. So I start from the bottom, we've got two hits, come over here, we've got two hits, three hits, um, all the way up here, and uh, this is probably my best shot, because you can see I've got hit, 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 I've got four consecutive hits on this thing. Um, and so it, it really is uh, the best in, in terms of, you know, my alternatives here. So this is the pitch I'm going to pick, okay? And even if I were to go down to this one, you can see my extension still isn't going to change too, too much. It all depends on your trading style, what you're going for, how accurately, excuse me, how accurately you really want to enter um, just in general. But when you're getting that picky with things, um, probably not a good idea to begin with, but exit strategy is a big one uh, when you talk about after that. So basically we're going from the retest to confluence, doing the same thing, going up to our peak, okay, and we're moving this point to go right below this high, okay, vertically. Okay, so I've got my um, crosshair lining up the axis and we're just going right on into it, okay. Uh, and so our daily low, you can see, uh, registered right down here, 128, 22, 21. Um, this, <clears throat> this lunge, it happens. You've got all sorts of flows going on today. So, um, the, you know, usually you'll notice a couple ticks above it or, or so. You, you'll get a, an initial reaction and then another race down into the level if it holds or not. Um, and what will oftentimes happen, too, is uh, I didn't point it out, but... Uh, we did use these other levels as resistance when we were coming lower, so on the five-minute chart. So um, so that's it, stopping at the golden ratio. The other one, again, 2.0. When you see this get broken, this using as resistance, you're basically sort of a path down to 2.0, typically. So um, I wanted to point out what happened yesterday, because this one's a little tricky, actually. But the concept is still the same. We're looking at this move up. We're trying to project where it's going up here. Okay, so we're looking for the first significant pullback, the first significant retracement, which is going to be right here. And we're lining that up. Okay, putting it right on there. Because we don't have much to work with uh, as far as this side is concerned. Okay, it's not like this kind of activity where I've got all sorts of confluence points to work with back here. I don't have that. All I've got is a peak and then a parabolic move down into the lows. So we're using this as our meter. Same principle, though. Grab your extension, draw it down to the base. OK, and then this point is going directly above the lowest low, which is right here. So just use a crosshair and line it up. OK, 
okay, and you're going to come up with a couple numbers. So here's your first one, 129.48 about. Okay, we came in, obviously hit some flows, next three bars over 45 minutes, kept on fading, 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 and then we just sort of drifted away, and then came up to uh, 129.78 approximately. Same, same story, you're basically filling a gap up here anyway from this thrust or this parabolic move down, um, and uh, it acts as resistance. And I mean, you can basically do this all day long, and actually we could probably do this with this one over here as well. So we're looking again for our next significant retrace. And this isn't going to hit 2.0, it looks like, but same thing. And we're looking for confluence. Can I find, what can I find for confluence? And, you know, again, this isn't a large move at all. And I should probably break down to a five minute chart even when I do this, but um, I'm just looking for as many hits as I can find. So I'm just going to go off the inner right there. And then we're dragging up. Okay, our highest high is right here, so we're going to line this up with that, and then this is going to go right below it to touch the trend line, right about here. Line that up. Okay, um, and once again, yeah, our, our low for the day, this is Friday, it's, it came in literally just probably about a half a tick above that or so. Okay, so pretty precise. Um, you know, so that's it basically. Uh, that's that's just one variant. There are there are a couple other ways of doing this, but as I say, this is sort of the the industry standard, the main convention. And that article, the first article I wrote, I um, only started talking about 2.0, that just 100 percent. But uh, you know, again, golden ratio. I, you know, and in fact, I find on other pairs like cable and things like that, uh, the golden ratio tends to just generally hold up a little better than the uh, the 100 percent extension itself. So uh, it does vary. Uh, but again, you know, it's just uh, especially on more liquid pairs like this one, you're going to find this holding integrity pretty often. So, uh, like anything else, just start using it, exploring with it, just play around with it uh, a bit. And uh, there are all sorts of things that you can use in terms of confirmation, which I'm actually I got a bunch of articles I'm ready to send out pretty soon about all that. So, um, but that is the major concept. Again, profit taking, trade entry however you want to uh, approach it, but uh, it's a pretty global standard that just pretty much anybody should know about, especially in this market, which is so technical. So that's about it for today, and uh, thanks for listening, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.